Okay, so in the previous video, uh, we saw a demonstration of a handful of uh, basic circuits that are used in the construction of the SCAT CPU. So I wanted to take a bit of time now to show you a bit what the code looks like uh, how, and how it's implemented inside the FPGA uh, in the source files. So uh, to do this, I'm using a language, a hardware definition language that's called Verilog. And the way it works in Verilog is you create, uh, if you want, what's called modules. So modules are like, if you want, black boxes that have inputs and outputs. And uh, you then uh, construct bigger and bigger circuits by uh, instantiating modules and connecting them together. So here we can see um, the first module is a module I called JNAND. Uh, all the modules I created for this project start with the letter J. And you can see that here we are really, it's really the only place where we are asking basically the, the software to produce us a real NAND gate uh, with those two uh, inputs and uh, wire C here as the output. Uh, ideally, this would be the only place in uh, the code where we will be referring to a real uh, gate or, or circuit. And as you will see as we move on, all the rest, like in the book, is constructed based on uh, what we've seen previously. So if we move down here to the, the not uh, circuit, we can see that it's constructed, just like in the book, using uh, a JNAND component where we send the same signal to both inputs and the output to a different uh, wire. And we go on like this uh, for all the different modules that we want to implement. Here we will have the AND uh, gate and the OR gate and basically constructed exactly as the diagrams show in John's book. Uh, so for the, the AND, we will have an AND going into a NOT. And here we'll have different NOTs and an AND to create the OR circuit. We will see the exclusive OR circuit uses uh, three NAND gates and two NOT gates, uh, exactly like uh, it, it shows in John's book. When you need to connect wires together and use intermediate wires, you will... Uh, you use uh, in Verilog the, the wire uh, keyword to declare wires and you just basically plug them as input or output to the various uh, gates. So if we move on to uh, the, the next component that we saw in the demo, here we have the enabler. In, in the enabler I use a bit of a uh, fancier or more advanced if we want uh, construct where we use a for loop to generate the eight uh, AND gates that uh, construct the enabler. So there's different ways that you can do things. I could have just placed eight uh, AND gates and connect them together with different wires. In this case I decided to do something a bit different. Here we'll have the decoder. The decoder is a bit more complicated to implement because I made this one. Uh, if we go here, we can see I made the uh, the decoder uh, dynamic. So you give it two parameters saying which size of decoder you want. So in this case, I, in the case of the demo, I said three and eight would be two and four, uh, no matter the values that you want, and it'll construct the decoder of the correct size. And finally, we will have the bus one circuit that we signed the demo here. Uh, again, it's all basically uh, the same as in the book. Uh, I just translated the drawing, the, the drawings and the diagrams in John's book to uh, the very large language, and then uh, implement it with the tools and upload it inside the uh, FPGA. So in the next video, we'll be looking at the ALU, so the Arithmetic and Logic Unit. So we will be demoing each of the operations of the ALU uh, in a way similar that we did in the previous video. And uh, after that, we will have a good part of, uh, of uh, the, the computer uh, ready to be assembled.
we will be moving on to uh, the RAM and uh, the memory and the clock bits which are a bit more complicated so I push them a bit later in the, in the project. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll look, be looking at the ALU.